Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff, and today we are checking out 10 really useful yet hidden features within iOS 15 that I thought you guys should know. Let's go ahead and check those out. Before we do though, I just wanted to make sure that you all knew about the AirPods Max headphones giveaway that's happening right now. Check the channel information link down in the video description below for more information on that AirPods Max giveaway, which will be ending at the end of June. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get on to those really cool features. Okay, so the first feature is found in the Maps app, and if you go into the top right-hand corner, you can see that I have a little car icon there. Um, that means that I'm on the driving map, but this is in an entirely different layout versus what we saw in iOS 14. You can actually select your map, and it gives you a little bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. So if I wanna just go to explore, I don't wanna see any uh, congestion data or anything like that. Um, I can actually go into the Maps app and change that, and get a live preview of what that's going to look like, something that we didn't have in iOS 14. We can go to transit, see transit, and then of course satellite as well. Um, so another really cool feature is also found within the Maps app. So I'll kind of go um, and select a, a kind of place that I want to go here, uh, get directions. And another really cool feature is from my location, so you can uh, change you know, your route and where you're going from. Of course, it's gonna start from my location and going down to this little shop here. Um, but we now have this feature called leaving now. So um, if you have leaving now, you can leave at a certain time or you can arrive by a certain time. So I wanna select um, arriving by 9 a.m. So if I select 9 a.m. as uh, my arrive by time, go ahead and click done it will actually show me when I need to leave by. So leave by 8.51, um, and that's the fastest route if I want to arrive by nine. So I can get a live uh, kind of preview of when I need to leave to get at this um, Carolyn's Cafe at a certain time during the day. I can go ahead and click go and um, go to the route. Now, the next feature is actually really cool because I can have multiple instances of an app on my home screen. So you can see here I have Spotify on my bottom bar here, and I can actually drag Spotify again and place it onto my home screen in different uh, pages. So I can actually add it to um, the first page as well again. So if I take Spotify here, I can place it on the first page as well. And basically this allows you to um, have different home screens. So if I uh, take that one out, I can go ahead and still have Spotify here on the first page. Of course it's down here, but basically you can do this with any app. And what this allows you to do is, it allows you during uh, when you have focus mode enabled, you might only have certain home screens available to you and you can select your different or various home screens to um, have instances of apps that allows you even in focus mode to access certain apps that you wanna have. So this is a really cool feature. Unfortunately, still no um, you know, app placement wherever you want, it's all in a grid view but you can have multiple instances of the same app in different pages on your home screen. And then of course, at the very bottom on the dock there. Okay, so the next really cool feature is drag and drop. So if I open up the notes app and I want to um, create a new note and I want to drag elements into this note, all I have to do is go to um, a link like apple.com I can create this uh, little draggable link here by just dragging on the link and I can open up the notes app and place that link into my notes. So that's apple.com there. But what's really cool is I can go to the, like the photos app and basically drag this photo here. So now it's draggable and I can place that into my notes app there. And I can basically do this with any different element that I want to and create notes from this. I can drag and drop anything into like Safari or any other apps, but basically you can take text links, any like pictures and drag and drop them between different apps on your iDevice now with iOS 15. 
Now, another really cool feature that we've never seen before and something that a lot of photographers will really love is uh, photos now has information attached to them. So if I wanna swipe up on any photo, I can obviously add a caption here, um, but I can also go and see the information about uh, what camera took this photo. So this would be really cool if I was taking photos like let's say with my Canon R5, um, but I can also use it with iPhone as well. You can get all of the different camera information like ISO, um, what lens you were using, the f-stop, everything like that. But what's really cool is I can also adjust the date and time here and adjust the metadata straight from iOS. This is something that previously you'd have to have like an app like Metaphoto to, to do. And now I can do this all straight through the default camera app, which is really, really cool. Now, the next really cool feature is in the Photos app as well. And what you can do is you can go and find different text on your photo. So you can see I have a text within this photo. And all I have to do is just hold down, just like I was editing text on um, any other platform or any other application. I can copy that text, go into a uh, Safari, and look this up directly in uh, Safari and I'm all set to go. So I can go ahead and um, basically get that information, copy and paste all directly from a photo and select that text and place it into whatever app that I want to. So this is a really cool instance of how you can get information about products. As you can see here, um, I have a color board and I can get the exact information about this color board uh, very quickly versus just typing it into Safari, um, having to look at everything, get the co uh, correct spelling. It's all done for you now with AI technology within iOS 15. Now, another really cool feature is system-wide translation. And what's really cool about this is I don't have to translate this entire page. As you can see, this is all in Spanish. But what I can do is I can select text uh, from this website. And as you can see, I uh, selected this little paragraph here. And I can go ahead and translate this information uh, to whatever la language that I want. So as you can see here, it automatically detected it as Spanish. And it's translating it into English. I can get that information. I can copy that translation translation, um, I can change the language that I want it to be um, translated to. So as you can see, the original um, is not really highlighted, but I can have this uh, translated into different uh, languages. So let's go ahead and select a Japanese and I can have that translation go into Japanese. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm speaking English, so I want it to be in English for the next time, but it's really cool how dynamic this new translate feature actually is within iOS 15. Now I can also uh, go into um, the Safari tab here and translate the entire page to English and it actually works uh, very, very quickly. So if you want to translate everything to English, it will do that fairly quickly for any website that you go to or any um, uh, content that you're looking at that needs translation, it will do that very, very quickly. Now, another really cool feature is um, tab movements within Safari. So um, as you can see, I have multiple tabs open here and I'm going to go to the first one. Um, that is my first, my second, and all I have to do is swipe. And it's just like this feature here. If I want to uh, swipe to different apps, I just go at the bottom here. And that's the same thing in Safari with the tab view. So I can switch tabs just as seamlessly as I can with uh, different instances of apps, um, like my multitasking feature within iOS 15. That's the same now within iOS uh, 15 Safari uh, mobile application here. It is really, really cool. It makes it really easy to switch tabs. Now, if you're at the end of the line here uh, with a uh, and you want to create a new tab, all you have to do is swipe to the right and a new tab will be opened so you can get started on new content uh, in Safari. Now, this is another really cool feature here. If I want to look up an app, I can go to Siri search. And what I want to do is I want to download the Facebook app. And the Facebook app is something that I want to get from the App Store, but I actually don't have to go into the App Store to get it anymore. I can get it directly from Siri search. I can go ahead, tap get and then install it from there. Obviously, Face ID is not going to work now because I'm not directly over um, Face ID, but you get the gist of it. I can go ahead and install an app directly 
from Siri search. I don't have to go into the app store anymore. So this is a really cool and handy feature. Um, you can just search directly from here and eliminate a few steps of going into the app store, uh, then searching and then going and finding your app. You can do it all from Siri search now and uh, download uh, and install apps directly from Siri search. Obviously, um, I have more instances of Facebook, so I can get Messenger, Facebook Business Suite. I can download all of these directly from Siri search. Now, a new hidden feature within uh, the settings app for you guys who are on the beta and are kind of wondering where profiles is. Um, a lot of people were wondering, like, where's my iOS 15 developer beta profile? Um, I can't really find it. And this is actually something for the future. If you want to go ahead and delete this in the future, you will need to know where this is. So um, as you saw, I went into the settings app general, and then I went to the bottom to VPN and device management. Now device management seems like kind of like the new verbiage for profiles and as you can see I have my VPN services up there and then go down and I have my configuration profiles down here so this is where you access that iOS 15 beta software profile for those of you on the developer beta this is where you will want to go ahead and remove this profile should you not want to be on the developer beta and for people on the public beta this is where you'll be uh, managing that profile in the future Okay guys, so those were 10 hidden yet very useful features found within iOS 15. And of course, if you have features that you think are worthy of being shared in today's video or future videos, please leave those in the comment section down below so other viewers and myself can check out those really cool features that you think should be added to the list. So thank you guys for watching today's video, but before you head out, make sure to check out the channel information link down below. Of course, we have that AirPods Max giveaway that you should totally check out, but we also have links to cool updated merch, the updated podcast, and we have information on how you can update to the iOS 15 beta as well. Now, before you head out, make sure to get subscribed, hit that like button, and also that notification bell as well to get updates on any future content. But with all of that being said, I hope to see you in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you guys have an awesome day.